Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Committee of the Whole meeting. Um, so, Commissioners, we have 10 items before us uh, on our formal agenda, and then we have two uh, special briefings. So, we'll depending on timing, we may just end up staying in here during that. Then we have Economic Development Project Team. And then after that, we have our second round interviews with city manager candidates this afternoon. So we have a full day. Hopefully we'll have time to eat in between there at some point. Yeah. Uh, we shall see. So let's get started. Uh, I'm assuming it's... Okay, okay, we'll just, we'll get started. Um, so the first one is a resolution to amend the 2018 public safety meeting schedule. So moved. Support. All right, so uh, Commissioner Jones, you want to tell us about this? You serve on public safety, right? Yes, indeed. We uh, have taken the opportunity to um, take a good hard look at the, uh, the schedule, but also consider the fact that we want to make it as um, easy as possible for our public citizens who are now members of the of public safety to engage. And so we decided to you know, move the time and, and uh, take the opportunity, hopefully, to, uh, to feed uh, those who participate. Uh, and so we it's have- It's a novel idea. Yeah, yeah. So, you have, <laughs> so we have before us a, uh, a schedule for uh, public safety. Great. And we will do our best, commissioners, to make sure that we are done with this meeting so that people are not waiting. Yeah. Uh, that's a, a goal of ours this year is to stay on time. Uh, so any commissioners, any other questions or comments about that? Just a comment. I think this is wise because history has proven we are too long-winded and many yeah. times it doesn't start till 1130 anyway. Right. Right. <laughs> all right. So I will call the question more quickly then. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. <laughs> those opposed? <laughs> It carries. Hello. Good morning. Sorry about that. It's okay. Um, we just did first resolution and it passed right now. Perfect. Um, all right, that will take us to our second one. That's a resolution designating the Chinese New Year celebration of the World of Winter Festival, a special event, and permitting the discharge of consumer-grade fireworks. So move, support. All right, so this is pretty straightforward. I'm so excited to see this uh, come forward. Yvette, you want to tell us about this? Absolutely. We're so excited that uh, this year we're adding a uh, Lunar New Year celebration um, to some of the offerings that we offer here at the city this February as part Part of that celebration, they would like to light some firecrackers on the Gillette Bridge. And firecrackers or fireworks? Firecrackers. Oh, yeah. All right. So I will let Ted Jensen speak to that. Yeah. I thought maybe both. Well, what they're proposing is consumer grade fireworks. So it's something you can readily buy at on 28th Street or any other fireworks vendor. So you don't have any any fire concerns. No. Not okay. more than normal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Good answer. Good answer. Um, all right, commissioners, any questions about this? Uh, a comment? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I just I want to take every opportunity that's possible to, first of all, thank you, because I know you watch out for us with uh, the safety, I think Ted. Um, but also to remind the public that these consumer-grade fireworks have been... Um, due to a state law change several years ago, are now allowed in the city as they weren't before. So I, I recently went to an annual meeting at Creston and the number one issue that everybody put their little dots on was complaints about consumer grade fireworks. And I just want the public to know that this is not something that the city approved. This is something that the state superseded us on. So right. every year around the 4th of July, we get lots of complaints about them and I wish there was something we could do but we cannot. Just note to public. Thanks. And so we will remind our uh, constituents to call their state reps and their state senators to complain. Good idea. All right. Um, any other questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? It carries. All right. So hopefully we'll see everyone down on February 16th. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you. Thank Coming you. up. Uh, all right, next that will take us to a resolution authorizing a contract for federal representation services in partnership with Grand Rapids Whitewater. So moved. Support. All right, and Karin is here to talk about this is uh, something we've talked about in legislative committee before bringing it here. And so we'll let Karin talk about it and then Eric and then those of us who serve in legislative, we are welcome to jump in. 
Good morning, everyone. This resolution is for federal legislative services. You may recall that the city was represented for many years um, and uh, in Washington, D.C., but we closed out that contract in 2016, and so we've been going without since that time. With the new administration and Congress, it's clear that now is not the time to be without representation in Washington, D.C. Grand Rapids Whitewater has had a very good experience with Potomac Strategic Development Company. So we've developed a partnership approach with Grand Rapids Whitewater for federal legislative services, and we would recommend a joint contract with Potomac. This arrangement would provide federal legislative representation services at a considerable savings over our former contract, while simultaneously creating an important strategic partnership. The proposed partnership contract would be $30,000 a year for the city. The city and Grand Rapids Whitewater would be invoiced separately and not responsible for the other party's financial obligations so that we would be able to pursue other uh, priorities on behalf of the city. I recommend this partnership to you because it provides a strong statement regarding our intent regarding river res restoration and helps provide a united and coordinated front for seeking federal support. We will enter into a future MOU with Grand Rapids Whitewater for management and construction of the river restoration project. This agreement would establish our first formal working relationship with Grand Rapids Whitewater. That's hard. Um, Eric, do you want to weigh in on this? Sure, I support this. Uh, we've worked uh, very carefully with Grand Rapids Whitewater to put this together. And um, I think it's a great arrangement and we're doing it. Um, we're getting, I think, great representation at a much lower cost than we got it before. So I think it's very important to yeah. proceed with this. Um, so, commissioners and legislative team, we talked about a couple of things. Um, one, the recent tax bill and the need for us to weigh in on that, especially we had some serious concerns around the historic tax credits and new market tax credits. And then also um, the need to have a voice when we apply for significant grants like COPS grants or some of the HUD grants we've received, including like the HUD grant we received for Seeking Safety, having, having a voice that can help push that through and talk about the importance of those grants and those dollars for our city is important. Uh, and so that's some of the conversation that we had at Legislative in support of this recommendation. All right, so Commissioner Kelly, Commissioner O'Connor, you both served, do you have any Anything else to add? Well, I think that um, using Potomac, I think it, one of the things we talked about was the fact that we are working with the county and area cities too. So there's some agreement that this is a good firm to work with and we are all going to be touched by this project because we all live around the, the river or are, are impacted by the river. So that's encouraging as well. Yeah, agree. Mr. O'Connor, anything yeah, to add? All right. All right, commissioners, any questions or comments? All right, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, it carries. All right, next that will take us to a resolution approving the Green Infrastructure Portfolio Standard Policy, which is a mouthful. So moved. <laughs> Support. All right, moved and supported. Good morning, Commissioners. I'm Carrie Rivette from Environmental Services, and what we lovingly refer to as the GIPS policy, because it's much easier to say. We've been working on this for a long time. It's taken culmination of a lot of policies, Green Grand Rapids, aligning with our vital streets, and then going through our Stormwater Oversight Commission. So Elaine Isley from our Stormwater Oversight Commission is going to give you the highlights of it. Great. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. A little static there. Um, so yeah, the policy very briefly I, is looking to um, input a goal of capturing 1% of the first flush, that first inch of rainfall. Um, we are online to track that already because we are capturing um, more than that with the installation of large projects like Joe Taylor Park and Mary Waters Park. So uh, the Stormwater Oversight Commission has approved this policy. We're recommending it for adoption to this board here. Um, and I do want to point out that uh, this was a pilot and we at the City of Grand Rapids and the City of Milwaukee were the first two pilot cities to do this. Uh, Milwaukee has not approved theirs. We would be the first in the nation to have a green infrastructure portfolio standard. So I just wanted you to consider that and thank you. Thank you, and thank you for your work on the um, Vital Streets Oversight and Stormwater Oversight. Absolutely. All right, Commissioners, questions about this? Commissioner? I, I'm commenting a lot this morning, sorry about that, but I just think it's uh, a tribute to WEMIAC that you have educated us that stormwater is the number one source of pollution in the Grand River and the Great Lakes, which is something that, frankly, I didn't realize until your campaign. So this is great if we can capture it and filter it through the ground. So thank you for your work. 
Thank you. Commissioners, any other questions, comments? All right, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? It carries. All right, next up will take us to a resolution establishing an obsolete property rehabilitation district for Leffingwell Holdings, Inc. Um, at 640 Leffingwell Avenue, Northeast. So moved. Support. All right, so John was here, you can tell us about this, but commissioners, we had a public hearing about this project. Um, I think we were all, uh, all of our questions were answered, uh, as well as uh, hearing from the owner who's really working hard to make this project come to fruition. So. That, that's great. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. So since you're very familiar with this project, I'll just give a brief, a brief overview uh, real quickly. So this is a request to establish an obsolete property rehabilitation district and approve a 10-year uh, tax exemption for the um, Leffingwell Holdings, Inc. project, which is related to Hex Armor, a local company currently located on Oak Industrial Drive. Just um, for everybody's benefit, this is again a performance-based incentive where there is no benefit derived until the investment is made. And the, the benefit to the company is a reduction in the increase in taxes that will result from their investment. So a recent partnership between Hex Armor and German-based UVAC Safety Group is driving this growth. They plan to invest um, over $4 million into the property and create approximately 50 good paying jobs over the next several years. So this is the final step in the local approval process and if approved we would forward on to the state for their issuance of the exemption. Great. Commissioners, any uh, questions or comments about this? No, this is a great project mm -hmm. all around. And it's in the second ward, which I remember Commissioner Jones and Commissioner Kelly. I drive uh, by it regularly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I will, uh, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, it carries. Um, and this next item is a companion uh, piece. So this is a resolution approving a 10-year obsolete property rehabilitation exemption certificate pursuant to PA 146 of 2000 for the same property located at 640 Leffingwell. Can I get a motion? Support. All right. Anything else to add, commissioners? Um, I'd just like to point out, we talked about this the other night, that their average hourly wage is a living wage at 23.70. I do think that we ought to start finding out um, the range, you know, the lowest amount on top, so that we aren't just looking at an average, but really happy about these. I, I, I think about uh, former Commissioner Lumpkins whenever I see these things through, because he would always take these and then push them out in the community to let people know about upcoming jobs. Yeah, yeah, which is exactly what we should be doing as yes. well. Yes, yeah. yeah. I was just thinking about Commissioner Lumpkins. Hmm. Saw him the other day. Uh, all right, any other questions or comments? All right, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? It carries. All right, next that will take us to a resolution approving adoption of Vision Zero approach to eliminate traffic-related serious fatalities and injuries. So moved. Support. All right, so Kristen is here to tell us about this. Good morning, uh, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, we actually have four, the next four items, and they're all interrelated, uh, but we introduced them back in October, and then we've gone through Mobile GR Commission in November and again back in January for more discussion as well as a number of other steps along the way, um, whether it's the Vision Zero or the next three items. So I don't know if you want to talk about them all together or do them individually. Commissioners, do you have a preference to talk about them together or separately? Together? Together Together. All right. <laughs> Unanimous. So, yeah, so the umbrella item is the Vision Zero Resolution. This was a recommendation out of the Vital Streets Plan, and the idea is to create a sort of overarching approach to transportation safety that's both data-driven as well as interdisciplinary. Um, it's something that you're seeing around the world as well as around <coughs> other cities in the United States, and so kind of set that tone and then move forward with uh, various departments within the city as well as some partners I think outside the city would be important to include, um, and that sort of takes our next steps forward on trying to improve transportation safety as we definitely are starting to see more challenges locally as well as nationally with crash crash um, histories so um, that would be the vision zero and then we had some other companion pieces that we were responding to some specific complaints uh, changed to chapter 51 to uh, require um, uh, basically traffic control plans for pedestrians and, and uh, people on bicycles during construction in our public right-of-way so that we can maintain their access during that. Um, and then the other item would be Chapter 181, which would be to require pedestrians or motorists to yield to pedestrians 
uh, change it from stop or yield to stop, a little less ambiguous, um, and uncontrolled crosswalks, whether they're marked or unmarked. And then the final item, which we'll uh, bring up with Asante Kane, who worked hard on that as well, is uh, arts and the public right-of-way policy, which is a little bit separate from the three safety items. All right. All right, commissioners, do we have any questions? Well, I will say that I serve, I'm serve on the Mobile GR Commission, and that uh, where, first of all, Vision Zero is so important. I think it's important to recognize that these are even unmarked crosswalks. I've had questions about that. So if somebody's crossing the street, we stop, mm -hmm. period. Um, sadly, we, we are all went to a funeral last week for a person we admire, John Canova, who was hit by a car at a crosswalk, and uh, Commissioner Schaefer, we were having a goodbye for him, which is why I think all of us felt that we really needed to attend that funeral and, and mourn that passing in that situation. But it, it is a clear example of why we need to be aware and work on uh, saving lives in the city. And then finally, the, the third policy referenced about the, the art in the, the crosswalks, it's not gonna get people to where they really want to be because there are some federal standards and there is no proof one way or another whether or not they actually uh, slow traffic or even do the opposite. So we are taking a cautious first step, but it's a first step. So just so that you're aware, you might want to take a look at that policy because I know I got a lot of input from residents in my ward wanting to do this. And if you want to familiarize yourself with what can and can't be done, I think that would be wise, commissioners. Yeah, thank you. All right, commissioners, any other questions, comments? All right, this is a priority. Um, I'll just echo that. Uh, we want to be a really safe place for pedestrians and cyclists, and uh, we want to be a walkable city, so this will help us get there. All right, with that, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed? It carries. All right, next that will take us to uh, an ordinance amending Chapter 181, General Traffic Regulations to Require ve Vehicle Operators right. to Stop. All right. Yeah, I was going to say right there. Yep. Even though we, we're we talked about all, all three, we yeah. still have to <laughs> vote on them separately. Um, and this is an ordinance, so uh, this will require vehicle operators to stop for pedestrians in uncontrolled crosswalks. Well, support. All right, commissioners, any additional comments or questions? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? It carries. And then the third one, which is also tied to this, and that's an ordinance amending Chapter 51 streets to accommodate pedestrian and bicycle safety and access in the public right of way during construction. So moved. Support. All right. And this, too, has been talked about at length. Uh, any additional questions or comments, commissioners? All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? It carries. Thank you for your work on this. Uh, also, please give our thanks to the full Mobile GR Commission. I know they've been working on this for months. All right, next that will take us to a resolution approving changes to City Commission Policy 1100-06 called Arts, Memorials, and Related Gifts. So moved. All right, Mr. Kane, you want to tell us about this? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm going to try to get through this without coughing. Let's see. Huh. Uh, so uh, one of my responsibilities is the uh, staff person that is the liais liaison to the uh, city manager's uh, arts advisory committee. Uh, the arts advisory committee has looked at the revisions of this policy and they are in support of it. Um, so what, this, what that committee does is when uh, people want to donate art to the city. This uh, body, this advisory committee, um, makes a recommendation of whether or not the city manager should, should accept that art. Uh, amendment to this policy strengthens criteria and procedures regarding public art, including acceptance of art and memorials to be city owned and murals visible from the public right away. Um, one thing that we've done um, recently, there's the um, uh, the mural on uh, at Madcap Coffee on Fulton. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you had a chance to see that, but I think that's representative of, of the work and the opportunity to uh, make place here in the city. Um, and it's good work, and it, it's work that hopefully you will um, strengthen by revising this policy. Um, so I'll be talking a little bit about the public art piece, and then Kristen Bennett will circle back around and talk about the crosswalk piece. 
Um, so early in 2017, the Arts Advisory Committee began the process to revise this policy. Uh, the revisions added new language to the 2006 policy that addressed the increased uh, temporary art that was a part of our city uh, due to Art Prize, uh, which has also raised the uh, awareness of the importance of public art here in the city. Um, further, uh, re recent court cases uh, regarding signs in the public right away caused us to uh, want to update this policy. Um, so this provision sets the framework for further enhancement that will be spelled out in an, in an administrative policy. Um, so there's more work to do. We have to figure out um, what we're going to require as far as any type of endowment. That's still a question that is an important question that still needs to be figured out. Um, also, uh, uh, Kristen might mention this, but regarding the, uh, the street art, uh, we will uh, we will take every opportunity to notify people if their um, if their pieces are going to be tore up because of construction or um, for any other reason that we have to be in a street to, to tear up someone's uh, work. Um, but so we will do that. I just want to assure people that that'll be a part of the process, the intake process. We will notify the applicants um, about if their art's going to be uh, damaged or moved or have some other impact. So that's it for my piece. So I'll turn it over to Kristen to talk about the uh, crosswalk piece. Oh, oh, Asante, I'm sorry, there's a question. Oh, so maybe you can yeah, yeah, tag sorry, team and stay yep, yep. Yeah. And I'll uh, see if other commissioners have questions. Go ahead, Commissioner Lanier. Thanks, Asante. Are you sick? Is that why you were hoping to get? I am okay, sick. Sorry I have to hear a cold that. and I have a, all types of stuff going on. Sorry to hear that. Oh, we're all going to get sick. Um, <laughs> right, now we know who to stay away from. <laughs> Um, just a quick question. So during Art Prize, there were provocative pieces that were installed um, down um, in the Calder um, in, internally inside of the building. And I think we had to um, place signs, parental advisory signs around the art so that people would be aware when they entered into the space. And so I wonder if there had been any conversations around that um, through this committee and how does that where is it in this policy that will address that? Be so uh, any art that's going to be on city property is vetted through the Arts Advisory Committee. Um, the Arts Advisory Committee did take a look at the art that you're speaking of. It was their idea to put that disclaimer there, um, but we want to stay far away from any type of censorship. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the committee and um, um, the former city manager thought that the signs was, was an opportunity to, uh, to let people know like what they were going to see when they when they entered into the space. So should the policy speak to provocative pieces and that I, because it isn't at least I didn't find that it was in there where it spoke to what would happen so that the public would be aware if they have a piece that they should still submit it and that it would go through this process. <clears throat> I think the other piece too is that the feedback that I received during the time when it was installed was that um, in light of it being our prize, that was kind of a unique situation where there was this um, obvious, you know, grand scale of art a across the city, but there was also the idea that in public spaces, um, where people may be coming without the plan of attending Art Prize with their children or whomever else, um, and then kind of walking into something as they're trying to pay a water bill. Yes. That, that was kind of an awkward position to put people in. So is the placement of that art also a part of the discussion as they're talking about the approval, where it's placed probably should be a part of that? It is a part of, a part of the process. Okay. Um, where it's placed in that in that particular situation, I don't know if that would have really helped. Sure. Um, but in general, yes, the art, um, the location is a part is a factor of the decision of whether or not to accept the art. Okay. Um, I would say though that the the temporary nature of Art Prize, may, I think the committee feels, and the and the, and the, the spirit of the committee is that um, we're going to be a little bit. Um, uh, forgiving for lack of a better mm -hmm. word as far as uh, um, um, flexible would be a better word um, when it when it comes to uh, the temporary nature of, of art prize sure. so something's going to be here for two weeks is different than those same pieces being there permanently um, so that was sure. part of the discussion I would agree with that because it also you know everybody's on notice that and would probably deduce that art would be in this building um, during that time but in other instances, they're less likely to be aware of that. So, To, to your original question, um, I, 
if you want to add the piece about provocative nature and that there's some opportunity for or some responsibility for us to make people aware. I, I guess one thing though is, you know, who's to say what's for, pro, what's provocative, mm -hmm. and that might be a struggle for the committee. Yeah. One, if I could, Mayor. Yeah. Go ahead. So uh, we also for the for this installation particularly, there is a curator, and we have a curation agreement with. Um, a person that does that. So uh, they're actually uh, assembling the show and selecting it. Mm -hmm. So a way to uh, maybe address this without working the policy is for that particular question that you raised, Commissioner, is deal with it in the curation agreement mm -hmm. and say that, you know, provide a, maybe a little more direction to the curator about the type of art that um, we might be looking for. Mm -hmm. And Thank you. Tom is the grandfather of this. <laughs> One of the things he just, hey, Sam, you gotta get this up there. Wow, you stepped up the grandfather. Got some this wise soul of the forest. There's actually in our administrative policy, they include clear criteria. Okay. Um, legally, there are only um, ways that we can guide in what pieces can be displayed on the public property, but there's an administrative guidelines that we worked with legal to actually create a clear guidelines to the staff in how they can review and to the committee. Okay. So there's actually there another document a, okay. that actually is doing everything that, that you mentioned. Okay, thank you. Godfather. Yes, Godfather <laughs> Grandfather, Godfather, grandfather. whatever it is. <laughs> thank you, Godfather. So Godfather or Grandfather? Yeah, I got Godfather better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Asante and Tom. <laughs> Sorry, Kristen, you can do your part now. Um, to switch gears, uh, part of the policy was to also cover the increasing number of requests that we're getting to do public art in the in basically the street or public right away on on public sort of works assets. So a lot of Commissioner Kelly talked about the idea of artistic crosswalks. That one has a lot of sort of some controversy across the country simply because of the regulations that we do follow, like every other city, uh, with federal standards on um, pavement markings and signs and those types of things. Uh, and uh, likewise, even though there's not been formal rulings. For from what we call the U.S. Access Board, which over governs uh, Americans with Disabilities Act, um, technical um, assistance and outputs, they have sort of cautioned cities to be aware that the crosswalk area is, a, is an area that needs to be clear to persons with um, disabilities and that maybe uh, changing that environment may be somewhat confusing to persons with some types of disabilities. <coughs> so we chose to be a little bit more cautious on the crosswalk opportunities, uh, but at the same time there's a lot of other locations within the public right of way that people can do decorative street painting or use other physical assets like our traffic signal cabinets, which we've seen some already, um, as well as street light poles, public uh, walls. Uh, we've even had conversations in Mobile GRM Parking about using some of our spaces within parking garages and um, near uh, uh, surface parking lots and other things as opportunities for art. Uh, we've even, with our bus stop project, we'll be talking about briefings. The idea, could they use those spaces at bus stops as uh, painted carpets, if you will, of, a, of a, maybe it's a bus stop that can't have a lot of amenities, but something that can be attractive within a neighborhood or a business district environment. So the policy is there to try to cover and then the procedures to follow. Um, I've worked on procedures in two other cities is creating a staff level procedure that people can input that's easy for them, whether it's a neighborhood association, a block club, um, a school, um, anyone who wants to come in and, and put together a policy or a, or a proposal for art in the street or art on a public asset and that there's a procedure for staff to walk through that process and then the Arts Commission to take their action as well. I could just, so there's a technical a technical committee that's associated with the uh, arts advisory committee, and that technical committee will will be the one be the group that will say whether or not uh, it's acceptable um, to have this art in the crosswalk or whatever it is. Um, and before I forget, because I don't know if it was set up at the beginning, but um, I. We would be remiss if we did not mention uh, Chris Sauls and uh, Suzanne Schultz, their help in getting some of this stuff together. Thank you. All right, commissioner's questions. So, I, so I'm curious, and I know all of us have probably seen this in other cities where there's really interesting creative art in crosswalks. Mm -hmm. And I, I read all the materials, and I, I recognize there's federal guidelines that can be interpreted very rigidly. But clearly, other cities throughout this country, and actually even in the state of Michigan, uh, they're they're being much more creative with. Um, art and crosswalks. So I, I'm just, I'm curious, the cities that are 
are more open to and actually I think encouraging of art in in crosswalks uh, how, how do they reconcile this um, push that they have with these federal regulations that we always hear about in some cases, because I did a lot of research for the previous two jobs I had um, in other cities, some cases they're just like, we don't really care what the feds say and that their risk management and their attorneys are comfortable with that. And in other cities, they take a more cautious approach. So uh, when I worked in Milwaukee prior to coming back to Grand Rapids, we chose to be somewhat more cautious. We had a few rogue installations and crosswalks, which had some positive feelings. And then in one instance, we had someone hit in one of those crosswalks and was very upset um, that it wasn't normal and they had a lot of complaints and there was concern about risk related to that. Um, to them, they felt like that the only concern was putting art in a crosswalk as opposed to real safety. And so there was a, kind of a backlash that came out of that in that specific instance. So um, I definitely, there's not a lot of research one way or the other as to whether they enhance or detract or they're just neutral in regards to safety. So I think one of the things is we've always sort of focused, at least in my previous lives, that this is an opportunity to place make um, first and foremost. Um, and that I think some of the things too is that we I was getting a lot of requests to do place making and crosswalks or other things at my previous job when in reality they wanted to have a conversation about real safety challenges. And so I wouldn't want this to usurp you know, someone saying, oh, we'll just do art and that'll solve our safety issue. In reality, we might have tools that, that we can use um, to actually address that safety problem and then allow them to still place make in their neighborhood or the business district too. Um, so this is, you, you feel like this is a, a middle ground? I think it's a great starting point and I'd like, hopefully it's like a glass half full that we're going to have a procedure and an opportunity for people to walk through a clear process, much like when the parklet process was established, instead of being sort of one-offs you know, that are coming forward. There's something publicly available. People can understand how they can walk through a process, whether it is a formal business district that's more organized, or maybe it's just like I said, it's a block club or a school that wants to get together and do some art in the intersection near um, their, their school or something. It's a process that most people can achieve uh, without a lot of cost and a lot of um, sort of red tape, if you will, so. Thank you. Did I see a hand over here? No? I had one, but I think I'll pass. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have enough of this yet. No, <laughs> I aim into that. <laughs> All right. Anything else, commissioners? So, so thank you for your work on this. Uh, I really appreciate it. I feel like we've been talking about this for a very long time. And uh, I remember when I uh, was a commissioner, this was a topic that was brought up uh, multiple times. Maybe not as much as fireworks, but <laughs> it was brought up a lot. All right, with that, I'll call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> It carries. Mayor, I'd also like to thank the team. Um, yeah. Many of them are in the room. Uh, the Vital Streets Oversight Commission had a role in this as well. And so, and, and Mobile GR Commission. So we got here um, with a good policy. Okay. Thanks. Great. Thank you. So, commissioners, we are back in here at 11, correct, for briefings? Mm -hmm. um, we have two briefings before us today. They'll probably take an hour. So we have one on cure violence and one on transit stop improvements project. Uh, and so please be back in here uh, no later than 11 a.m. Maybe 10.58 would be good so that we don't keep people waiting. And with that, our Committee of the Whole is adjourned.